real diamond by M. A. Holland. Real diamond is a love story about two everyday people that nobody knew about. Their names are Frank and Marie. And by the way, I am Marie, and I will be telling you the story. Since this is a true story, I use our experiences to show how the relationship of two people can make a difference in the outcome of their lives. My goal is to make the reader feel that I am in the room with them telling the story firsthand. Now sit back and read on, and you will find out how the real diamond that Frank gave me affected our lives. Enjoy the story. M. A. Holland. Table of Contents. Chapter 1. The Purchase of the Real Diamond. Chapter 2. How Frank and Marie Met. Chapter 3. The Pot Plants. Chapter 4. The Stolen Car. Chapter 5. The Unknown Songwriter. Chapter 6. The Big House. Chapter 7. Ghost in the Townhouse. Chapter 8. Sale of the Real Diamond. Chapter 9. Final Thoughts. Chapter 1. Purchase of the Real Diamond. Our story begins before Frank met Marie. Frank lives in a big city on the East Coast with his mother and stepdad. He helps them run three apartment houses near the center of town. He earns his keep by collecting rents, maintaining the properties, and by doing household chores for his mom. Frank was also working as a movie theater manager in the center of town, as well as odd jobs in the neighborhood. He was also writing songs whenever he had any spare time. He wrote a song entitled, Real Diamond, for his favorite rock singer. But he was very disappointed when he found out that this rock star wasn't taking outside material. Frank wrote the lyrics to fit the title. He now decided to make the lyrics come to life by doing the things that he described in the song. He started saving as much money as he could to buy a real diamond for the girl of his dreams. Since his expenses were minimal, he was able to save a lot of money in a box. Months passed and the money started to pile up. During the first year, he saved about $7,000. And after three years, he had over $20,000, which was his goal. He would have had more, but he gave his mom $100 a week to help her with household expenses. Since his savings was in cash, he kept the money in $100 bills so he could count it easily. You are probably wondering why he wasn't saving so much money before. Because he didn't have the movie theater job until after he wrote the Real Diamond song. Now, Frank was ready to purchase the Real Diamond. Frank knew the jewelers downtown. So he decided to see what he could find in his price range. He finally found the one he wanted. It was about the size of a quarter and about an inch in thickness, and it was mounted on a gold band. Frank told the jeweler to make the ring size the size that he makes the most. Frank paid off the real diamond in three payments. Next, he put the real diamond in a safe deposit box until he found the girl of his dreams. 
which he thought was going to be difficult until he met me. I would like to highlight a few things here. During the period of time that Frank was saving the money, he was held up at gunpoint at the movie theater. His mother got ill and recovered, and his car blew a transmission. Frank survived all these things to kept working and saving. One more thing that I would like to mention here is that Frank never told his mother about the money that he saved to buy the real diamond, and she didn't have a clue. Remember, I am telling the story, and I didn't exist yet in Frank's life. You will find out how Frank met me as you read on. Chapter 2, How Frank and Marie Met Now that Frank has the real diamond wedding band put away for safekeeping, all he has to do is find the girl of his dreams. He started to go to clubs and met different women that he dated, but they didn't have the spark that he was looking for. His mother noticed a change in him and said, Son, what's bothering you? He said that he wanted to go out on his own and didn't want to be tied to her apron strings. His mother told him that whatever he wanted to do was all right with her. Frank went back to doing his job and saving his money to create a nest egg for him and the girl of his dreams. Frank's mom talked to this guy who was a friend of the family about getting Frank a girlfriend. He said that he knew me for a while and that I lived alone and nearby. The friend of the family asked Frank if he could fix the broken antenna on my TV. Frank said, sure. He took Frank to my apartment, and when they arrived, he said, Marie, this is Frank. And I said, I'm pleased to meet you. Frank got the TV working fine. It was a bad connection. I asked Frank, how much do I owe you? The friend of the family said, I will pay him. Frank gave me his phone number and said, if you need anything done, call me. Lo and behold, I called him and told Frank that my record player was acting up, and could he come over and look at it? And he said, sure. When he arrived, he said, Marie, where's the broken phono? I showed it to him, and he said, I think you need a new needle, and that he would take the old one, and get a new one in a couple of days. This was only the start of many visits to my apartment. Frank came back and fixed the record player and anything and everything that I needed fixed. I tried to pay him, and he said, you can chalk it up to our friendship. Since Frank had a car, he took me to drive-in movies, dinners, and any place I wanted to go. I was falling in love with Frank, and he was falling in love with me. He asked me, would you like to meet my mom and stepdad? I said, yes. Frank only lived a few blocks from my apartment. When we got there, Frank's mom was waiting at the door and said, I have been looking forward to meeting you, and I have heard a lot of good things about you, and I hope that you will make Frank happy. His mother liked the idea that I was a little older than him. Frank took me as much as he could to see his mom and stepdad. Frank started staying overnight at my apartment only on weekends. Remember, at this point of the story, nobody knows about the real diamond, including me. While lying in bed with Frank, he told me that both his mother and real dad were both in show business and his mother met his father at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. They both worked the 1939 World's Fair, as well as carnivals, circuses, and expositions across the country. I asked Frank, what did your parents do when they performed? Frank told me that his mom was a singer, exotic dancer, fortune teller, and a stunt motorcycle driver. 
Frank told me that his father worked with Frank Buck as an animal trainer, and he was also a song and dance man, a sideshow barker, and did stunts in silent movies. Then with tears in his eyes, Frank told me that his father died when he was only 12 years old because of alcoholism and cancer of the throat due to heavy smoking. He also told me that this is why he doesn't drink or smoke. I told Frank that I don't drink or smoke either. Frank then said, it looks like we are going to grow old together. I was getting to know Frank more and more every day. Frank asked me that if he got his own place, would I move in with him? I said, wherever you go, I go. Frank then told me that he was looking at different places in the same neighborhood. In the meantime, we kept going to see his mother and stepdad. Frank told me that he was growing tomato plants in his mother's backyard and that he had a green thumb. During one of our many visits to his mother's house, he showed me the plants. They were taller than me. In the center, he had plants that were green, but no fruit. I asked Frank, why is there no fruit on some of the plants? He told me that he was trying to develop a new kind of plant and that he would explain later. The next night in bed, Frank told me that the plants in the center with no fruit were pot plants. I told him that he had a lot of explaining to do and it better be good. Chapter 3, The Pot Plants You are probably wondering what pot plants have to do with the story of a real diamond. I feel that this is the most important chapter in the book, because this was when Frank decided to make me the girl of his dreams and give me the real diamond, because I stuck by him when he told me about the pot plants. So, the next night in bed I asked Frank, why are you growing the pot plants? He said that he was trying to graft a tomato plant with a pot plant, and so far he wasn't having any success. Then I asked him, do you smoke pot? Frank said, no. I just bought bags of pot from a guy at work just for the seeds, and then I threw the seeds all around the tomato plants. When they then, Frank then told me that when the plants started to grow, he weeded out the weaker plants. Then I asked him, does your mom know? Frank replied, no. Frank, you know that we all can get in trouble if you ever get caught growing those pot plants. I think you better get rid of them as soon as possible. Frank agreed. Then I told Frank, tomorrow is trash night and we should bag up the pot plants. The next day, I went to Frank's house and told his mom about the pot plants and that we were going to pull them up, put them out with the trash tonight. Frank's mom was glad that I told her about the pot plants and even loved me more for convincing Frank to get rid of the pot plants. It took us about, I guess, two hours to pick up and bag all those pot plants. The next day, all the trash is picked up, and we were all relieved and back to our daily routine. Guess what? Frank's mom made us a big dinner of spaghetti and meatballs topped with tomato sauce made from the tomatoes that Frank grew in the backyard. We also had a salad, you guessed it, with the tomatoes from Frank's garden. The meal was delicious. Frank's mom was Italian and a good cook. Frank grew the tomatoes every year so that his mom could preserve them for sauce all year round. That night in bed, Frank told me that he was a songwriter, and then I asked him, why don't you write a song about the pot plants? Frank thought for a moment and then said that he would call the song, Don't Let Yourself Go to Pot. Over the next week, Frank wrote the lyrics, and George Liberace in California composed the music in rock style. When the demo arrived, Frank couldn't wait 
to tell me, let me hear it. The lyrics had nothing to do with the pot plants. Instead, the words that he used was encourage people to exercise, to get into shape, so that no one should let themselves go to pot. When I heard the song, I was impressed how Frank turned something that was so bad into something so good. The singer sounded just like his favorite rock star. I guess there's only one thing left to do is to let you read the lyrics that Frank wrote about those pop plants, which is as follows. Don't let yourself go to pot by the unknown songwriter. You may think that you're headed in the right direction, but it would be better if you stay put and strive for perfection. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Remember, you're as young as you feel, and that's why you should give yourself a better deal. Look at your appearance every day, and then decide if you want it to stay that way. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Exercise to keep yourself thin. The more you do it, the easier for you to begin. If you like to run, then getting into shape ought to be fun. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. If you want to be happy in the world today and enjoy yourself at work or play, then keep the new you on your mind and leave your old self far behind. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Whether man, woman, or child, or a person who is just mild, it's up to you to decide what you're going to use as your guide. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Just as the climate changes throughout the year, you should use your time to get yourself into gear. It doesn't make any difference whether it's cold or hot, as long as you don't let yourself go to pot. Chapter 4 The Stolen Car A few months has passed since the pot plant incident. Everything seems to be back to normal. Frank is working as hard as ever and staying with me on the weekends. His mom and stepdad are doing well. Frank called me and asked me if I would like to go to dinner at one of our favorite restaurants. I said, sure. And then Frank said, put on your most beautiful gown and I will pick you up around 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Marie, my baby. I'll see you tomorrow, Frankie. At about 8 p.m. the next day, Frank came to pick me up. He parked the car and came in to wait for me to finish getting ready. Frank said, let's go. I said, hold your horses. I will be ready in a few minutes. Finally, we left. And when we got outside, I said to Frank, where'd you park the car? He said, right there in that empty space. I said, Frank, you mean someone stole your car? He said, you got that right. We went back inside and Frank called the police and reported the car theft. Then Frank turned to me and said, how about trying this again in a couple of days at about the same time? I said, sure, I will get another car by then. So a couple of days had passed and Frank came to pick me up. This time I was ready. When we got outside, Frank said he had a surprise for me. I said, Frank, there's your car. How, how did you get it back? I didn't. I got another one from the same dealer. Except this one is better. It has air conditioning. Frank said, let's go. As we were pulling out, Frank yelled out, Marie, there's my other car. He chased after it and caught up with it about eight blocks away. Frank called the police and they caught the guy. There was a newspaper reporter on the scene and he wrote what happened. It was in the newspaper. I am going to highlight this article, which will help me explain this part of the story better. My interpretation is as follows. This reporter was a witness to Frank's stolen car. 
He said that he was passing by at the same time that the cops were coaching this guy out of Frank's stolen car. No fuss, no busted heads, and no guns drawn. This old guy had a story. He told the cops that he was drinking in the bar across the street when a man came in and offered to sell him a car. Cops checked out the bar. The guy who tried to sell Frank's car to the old guy made it out the back door. This old guy looked so harmless with stooped shoulders, thinning hair, glasses, and he was well dressed, which made his story easy to believe. The reporter then says, you have cop cars pulling up to block the stolen car, and the old guy who looks like a bank clerk sitting behind the wheel, and Frank walking back and forth on the sidewalk saying excitedly over and over, that's my car. The stolen car was the identical twin of the car that Frank had just gotten out of. This reporter went on to say, that in the two days since the car was stolen, Frank had got, gone out, bought another car exactly like the stolen one. Frank was in his new car when he spotted the old one. And now, this he, his two cars were parked just a few spaces apart. Frank loved his old car so much that he went out and bought an identical twin. The reporter then writes that there was a point in the drama that he decided that it was all over. The owner had his car back, the car thief had gotten away, and the old guy was in the clear. Luckily, the cops kept their hands on the old guy. They took him in for checking, and his story fell apart. Frank contacted the reporter and filled him in on some details about the stolen car incident. Frank told the reporter that he wasn't fooled by the New York license plate that was put on his car after it was stolen. I knew my car, Frank said, and I loved my car. The new car that Frank had rushed out to buy was identical to the old one, down to the 100,000 miles plus that both had on the speedometers. The wind-up is that Frank got his old car back, and he sold it to the same dealer that he bought the twin from. This reporter closes the article by saying that 10 days later, the old guy was arrested again and charged with stealing another car. Next is what happened when Frank sold the stolen car back to the dealer. Frank asked me, do you know how to drive? I said, yes. So Frank drove the stolen car to the dealer and this author followed him in the identical twin. After the transaction was completed, I drove Frank home and he told me to be ready at 8 p.m. the next day to go out on the town. Frank picked me up at my apartment at 8 p.m. sharp. We went to our favorite restaurant. After we finished our meal, Frank told me to close my eyes and put out my hand. And on my finger, he placed a real diamond wedding band. When I opened my eyes, I couldn't believe what I saw. A wedding band with a large diamond in the center, about the size of a quarter. I asked Frank, is that a real diamond? And Frank said, you got that right. I couldn't believe it. I asked him, how did you know my ring size? Frank told me that when he bought the real diamond, he told the jeweler, to make it the size that he makes the most. Frank then said, Marie, I know now that you are the girl of my dreams because the ring fits you perfect. I told Frank, I want to wear it all the time. I love it so much. But Frank said, it's going to be, not going to be safe to do that. This will have to be kept in a safe deposit box because of its value. I asked Frank, how many carrots does this wedding band have? He whispered in my ear, $20,000 worth of carrots. I asked Frank, where did he get the money to pay for it? He told me that it took him three years to save the money, and we cannot tell anybody about the real diamond. It has to be our secret. 
I told Frank I want to wear it. He told me that he has a way that I could wear it. He said that he was going to go back to the jeweler and have him make the same wedding band in the same size with a fake diamond. We left the restaurant and went back to my apartment and went to bed. Frank put the real diamond away until the fake diamond was ready. When it was finished, he brought it to me and I tried it on and it fit perfect. It was identical to the real one. I asked Frank, how are we going to tell them apart? Frank said, a real diamond can cut glass, a fake diamond can't because it's made of glass. In my heart, I knew that Frank really loved me and he wanted to make me happy. Frank put the real diamond in the safe deposit box and told me that what bank and gave me the key. Frank told me that if we ever needed money, we can use the real diamond to help us out. I asked Frank, did you ever think about writing a song about the real diamond? Frank said yes, and he already had the lyrics completed and was going to send it out to George Liberace in California to do the music and rock style. I couldn't wait to hear it. Frank told me that he would bring it over the demo as soon as it was done. In a few weeks, the demo arrived, and Frank played the song for me. I was surprised how Frank made the lyrics tell the story of how we went to dinner at our favorite restaurant and how he gave me the wedding band. The lyrics for Real Diamond is as follows. Real Diamond by the Unknown Songwriter. If I had a real diamond, I'd be rich as I could be. But if I had your love, that would be enough for me. Whenever I look at you, your eyes sparkle like a star. It lets me see you, whether near or far. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love that I have for you would be the same in any land. Put on your most beautiful gown, because we're going out on the town. You deserve the best, and that's why I want to take you to dinner as my guest. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love that I have for you would be the same in any land. Now that we've finished our meal, I would like to show you the way I feel. Close your eyes and put out your hand. On your finger, I will place a wedding band. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love that I have for you would be the same in any land. I can tell by the expression on your face that this was the right time and the right place. This means that we can start a new life as Mr. and Mrs. or man and wife. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love I have for you would be the same in any land. Chapter 5, The Unknown Songwriter the next night in bed, Frank told me that he wrote the song Real Diamond several years ago for his favorite rock singer and that he was unsuccessful because this rock star wasn't taking outside material from anyone including him. Frank still kept trying. He sent his song to the rock star's lawyer, fan club, and even when he was performing at concerts by certified mail. Frank finally decided to put this song in a package with other songs that he had written for this rock star and copyright them under the heading Rock Songs, Words, and Music. This way Frank could prove he wrote these songs. Frank, what you just told me really sounds like you know what you are doing. I think I will call you the unknown songwriter because no one knows about the songs that you wrote but me. Frank then told me that he really was glad that this rock star didn't take outside material because he liked being unknown and enjoyed his anonymity. But read, there is still more to tell you. Since I made up 
the lyrics for Real Diamond to rhyme with the rock star's name. And the lyrics that I wrote never happened. I decided to make the lyrics come to life by acting them out. I saved a lot of money and bought a real diamond, and then I would have to find a girl to give it to. Marie, meeting you, the song came to life. I told Frank I was very happy that he told me about this. Marie, do you want to hear more? I said, sure, darling. Marie, while I was writing these songs, I decided to take singing lessons three times a week for about a year so that I would be able to sing the songs that I wrote. Frank, you can sing too? So can I. That's great. Maybe someday we can sing one of my songs in a duet. Frank, maybe we can have a session next week here in my apartment. Frank said, let's give it a try. A week passed and Frank came over with his tape recorder of the singing lessons that he took. He said, Marie, we can practice by using the lessons that I have recorded. So for a while, we were both having a lot of fun singing songs and practicing together. Then one day, Frank said to me, Marie, we're not professional singers. I think that we should stop fooling ourselves and get on with our lives. I told Frank that I agreed and that we should only sing in the shower. Frank laughed and said that he enjoyed writing the songs more than singing them. By the way, since we have been going together, Frank wrote a song for me. I asked him what was the title. He said, Marie, My Baby, which he said would be a bigger hit than Real Diamond. The company that I used to compose the music liked the lyrics so much, they did the music for free. I asked Frank, do you use several companies to do the music? He said, I use George Liberace in California. George is the brother of the famous pianist Liberace. Marie, you have to be very careful who you farm your lyrics out to because there are many song sharks out there and they use the same music for every song. And all they want to do is get their teeth into your wallet. Marie, how do you like the music that you heard so far from George Liberace? I said, it sounds very good, and the singer they use also sounds good. Marie, over the weekend, I will bring the song that I wrote for you. I'll see you then, Frankie. I couldn't wait to hear the song. Frank came over and played the demo for me, and I couldn't believe how good it sounded. Frank told me that he would write more songs about our relationship. I said, that would make me happy. And Frank said, the title of my next song will be, You Make Me Happy. And Marie, you do make me happy. Then he said that he's been looking for a place in the same neighborhood so that we could move together. I told Frank, I go wherever you go. Frank said, I will let you know when and if I find a place. We kissed and he went home. Remember, folks, I'm writing a story of what happened over 40 years ago. The following is the lyrics for Marie, My Baby. Marie, My Baby by the Unknown Songwriter When she walks down the street, she has every man at her feet. When she gives them a smile, she makes it worth their while, because that's Marie, My Baby. She's got what it takes, I know because I have to put on the brakes. From the sparkle in her eyes till the last goodbyes. If she would ever leave me, that would bring on the cries. From the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, you'll never find anyone as sweet as Marie, my baby. For the curl in her hair and her personality beyond compare, she's bright and out of sight. No matter what she wears, she always gets the stares. Just as the darkness signifies the night and the daytime gives you the light, I never let the girl I have out of my sight, because that's Marie, my baby. For the sunny, or rainy, windy, or cold, there is a girl who is often quite bold, because that's Marie, my baby. 
Wherever she goes, everyone knows that she's the one who always has lots of fun. Even though she doesn't have fame, she'll always be the same. Because that's Marie, my baby. Chapter 6, The Big House I have been listening to the songs that Frank wrote, and I noticed that the lyrics really have meaning. You couldn't tell when he wrote those lyrics because of the words that he used. A couple of weeks had passed, and Frank called me and says that the demo for You Make Me Happy had arrived, and he was going to bring it over tonight. I couldn't wait to hear this song about our relationship. When Frank arrived, he couldn't wait to play the song for me. Marie, get ready to be amazed. I listened with interest, and I was amazed of how good the lyrics and music sounded. The lyrics were about our relationship, and Frank used words that were simple. Here's a sample of the lyrics. I hope that you knew that the love I have is only for you. Even from the very start, I had the feeling that it was going to be hard for us to part. The reason I mention these lines here is that it did come true with Frank Root over 40 years ago. The complete lyric sheet for You Make Me Happy will appear at the end of this chapter. Now back to the current story. Frank asked me, how did you like the song, darling? I said, every song that you write seems to have meaning. Then Frank replied by saying, Marie, being with you brings out the best in me. I said, Frank, I am flattered. When you send your lyrics to the music company, do they turn them down if they're, they are not song material? Frank said, yes, but they will change a, a few words to make the lyrics more commercial and making sure that there isn't anything that could offend the public. Remember, Marie, I only write lyrics about good things. Frank, you do make me happy. I really enjoyed this song a lot. Since this was a weekday, Frank told me he would call me tomorrow from work, and then we kissed and Frank went home. The very next day, Frank called me and said that his mother sold the apartment houses with the money she bought a private home only three blocks away. He also told me that he found a townhouse only three blocks from my apartment and he wanted me to see it. And if I liked it, then we could get it before someone else did. Frank picked me up that evening. He had the keys. When I saw the outside, Frank told me that this townhouse was built around 1870. Frank opened the door. I couldn't believe what I saw. I was awed by a big living room with hardwood floors, exposed brick walls, and in the center was a fireplace. I asked Frank, does it work? He said, you got that right. Next, there was a dining area, and through a hall was the kitchen, and through another hall was the bathroom, which was next to a very large bedroom, which I called our zone of privacy. Frank asked me, how do you like it so far, Marie? I said, great. Then he turned around and went back through the hall and went out to the back door to a big backyard. Frank told me that he could grow a nice garden. I told Frank, no pot plants. He said, I promise only to grow vegetables. Then we went back inside up a large staircase to the second floor, which had another large bedroom with a full bath. Now the only thing left was to see the basement. We went down the stairway from the second floor through the kitchen and down another stairway to the basement, which was very large and had a washer and dryer and plenty of storage space. Frank asked me, have you decided to get this place or not. Frank, I really like this place a lot. Marie, one more thing. We have central air and heat, and the address has the same four digits as your apartment. 
Then I told Frank, the fact that the address has the same numbers is an omen, and I think that we should get this place before someone else does. Frank said, consider it done, and we can be with each other all the time, and not just on weekends. Frank was happy that I liked the place as much as he did. We left, and Frank said, start packing your things. Now, Frank was going to help his mother move and help me move and also take care of all the paperwork. Frank's mom called me and congratulated me because we got a house close to her. And she also told me that she sold the apartment houses so that Frank wouldn't have to work so hard. Finally, he could be on his own. I told his mom that I loved her even more for doing what she did. We were all pretty busy the next couple of weeks. Finally, everything got moved, and we were one big happy family again. I couldn't wait to start living in our new place. I kept thinking about the real diamond song that Frank wrote, because now the song has come to fruition. The end of the song says that we can start a new life as Mr. and Mrs. and as man and wife. The only problem now is that Frank will have to pay rent and the bills for the townhouse. I can help some because I work part-time as a dental technician and also as a seamstress. I wore the imitation real diamond everywhere I went, and everybody thought it was real. Frank had to work some weekends, so I went to New York to see my friends. While I was gone, something bad happened. Frank came home from work about 2 a.m., and he was getting ready for bed upstairs when he heard glass breaking downstairs. He went down and let this guy break in. Frank held this burglar there at gunpoint until the police arrived. Frank pressed charges. The next day, the police called Frank and told him that this guy broke in to get the big diamond ring that I was wearing. Frank told the police that I was at home and I was wearing the big diamond ring in New York. The police asked Frank, how much was the ring worth? Frank told them, 20 G's. But he didn't tell the police that the real diamond was in a safe deposit box in the bank. Frank told me what happened when I returned from New York. He said, Marie, don't flash the fake diamond ring too much because of what just happened. The guy that broke in saw us in the restaurant around the corner and followed us. Frank got the window fixed and was worried about me being alone after the break-in. Frank contacted the landlord and paid half to have iron bars put on all the windows and doors. Frank dropped the charges against the guy who broke in because he figured that this guy would not bother us anymore, and that seemed to do the trick. No more trouble. Frank told me that if this guy didn't break in, we wouldn't have the iron bars on the windows and doors. This way, when we go out on the town, we won't have to worry about anybody breaking in. I like this townhouse more and more every day. Frank was working hard to keep paying the bills, and he told me that we should have credit in case we needed help with the bills. So Frank started getting credit and more credit, and he was using it to pay the gas for the car, eating out with me and groceries and car repairs. I didn't realize how much credit that Frank got. He got so much credit that he was using one credit card to pay another credit card. This went on for a while. I knew that something was wrong when the United States Postal Service broke down the doors and ransacked the house looking for evidence. They didn't find a computer, but found the files for all the credit cards that Frank got. After they left, Frank told me that he used false information to get all those credit cards, and that they thought that he was a ringleader. I was really upset. Frank was appointed a public defender and was talked into taking a plea bargain instead of a jury trial, in which he could be sentenced up to 15 years, and with a plea bargain, only about a year. Frank got sentenced for 12 to 14 months for credit card fraud and mail fraud. 
since Frank wouldn't be working, we decided to pawn the real diamond to pay the rent and bills until Frank is back home again. And I would keep paying on the real diamond. Frank had a very good friend at the job that helped me do shopping and things around the house until Frank returned. I talked to Frank almost every day at the prison camp, and he wrote me a lot. Finally, time passed, and Frank was back home again. He had his job waiting for him. Everybody knew that Frank was railroaded by the government. By the way, I'm thinking about writing another book entitled Railroad to Prison. That's why I didn't go into too much detail up here about Frank's criminal case. Back to the current story. Frank was so sorry for what he did. He promised me no more credit cards and that he had learned his lesson. That loan on the real diamond really saved us. Now that Frank is back to work, he kept paying the loan on the real diamond, which took him about a year to pay off, and then he put it back in a safe deposit box. During this ordeal, I kept wearing the fake diamond. I decided at this point of the story to add one of the many letters that Frank wrote me from the prison camp, because he writes the letters like he went up the river to Italy instead of to prison. This letter is next. Hello, Marie, my baby. I miss you very much. It took eight days to get here. The name of the ship was the Conta Grande. These ocean liners have everything. The waters were a little rough, for I didn't get seasick. Whenever this happens, they run velvet-covered ropes around the inside of the ship, so you can hold on when you go from one compartment to another. Cousin Eddie was waiting for me with open arms when I got off the ship in Naples. He speaks Italian fluently and knows his way around here. We are staying with his mother in a small cottage, and I'll be living with them as long as I'm here. They are treating me like a king. There is plenty to see here. We already saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Isle of Capri, the Blue Grotto, and the Mount Vesuvius Volcano. And we also went to Venice and Rome. Marie, as the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. We ate pasta almost every day. I put on a few pounds. Enough sightseeing for now. The real reason I'm here is to get my grandfather's inheritance, which is in the form of a house and the property it is built on. Since my mother has passed, I am the rightful heir. One of the problems with the property is that it is run down and needs a lot of repairs. The value of the property is low because of its condition. There is also a lot of back taxes owed. I am trying to make a deal with them. The government here wants to take the property over to pay the taxes that I have accrued over time. But I could fix the place up. I could sell it and pay the taxes and maybe have some money left. This is going to take a lot of time. Eddie knows people here who will give us a lot of the materials we need to restore the property to its original condition. Once I get the property restored, then and only then, I will take this ship back home to your loving arms. This project had to be done now before I lost everything. I will call you when I can. I hope everything is going great for Marie, my baby. I'm getting to know my way around here. I think that this would be a nice place to retire to, since we have been living so long in a big city. Instead of just moving to another part of town, I'd rather make a big move and come back here. We'll discuss this when I get back home. This decision will be up to you. It's a nice place to live. It's so beautiful and crime doesn't exist here. And everyone is so friendly. I think about you every day. 
and the love I have for you is getting stronger. Remember, as the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Love always, Frank. That was the end of one of the many letters that Frank wrote to me from the prison camp. Reading this letter almost made me believe that Frank really was in Italy. Uh, one more thing that I would like to mention here is that this was the first time in our long relationship that I wasn't with Frank on Valentine's Day. I would like to include here a poem that Frank sent me from the prison camp. It reads as follows. Valentine's Day poem from the prison camp by the unknown songwriter. Even though I can't send you money, thank you for being my honey. In my heart, you will always be the same. But in your heart, I will always remain. When I'm back in your loving embrace, I promise you that I will not be in this place. Even though you can't see me now, but when you do, the cats will meow. I went on a trip up the river for a while, but when I return, you will have a big smile. For many months you won't see my face, but you will the day that I'm out of this place. Pray to the heavens above that I return safe and sound with my love. When I get back, I will treat you like a queen, and things will be better when I'm back on the scene. I don't have many things to do with my time, so that's why I decided to write you this rhyme. Even though I can't be there, I would like to say, I will make it up to you on next Valentine's Day. I hope that you like the poem that Frank wrote me on Valentine's Day from the prison camp. I am including the lyrics of You Make Me Happy for Your Reading Pleasure on the next page. You Make Me Happy by the Unknown Songwriter. As the clouds come and go, the thoughts I have for you begin to grow. I look in the sky, and I think of someone who is beautiful and shy. You make me happy the whole day through. Every breath that I take, and every wish that I make, I go around with you on my mind. A more wonderful person would be very hard to find. You make me happy the whole day through. You are just like a sunny day. When I'm with you, you make the clouds go away. But when I'm not, the happiness that you've given me means a lot. You make me happy the whole day through. I hoped that you knew that the love I have is only for you. Even from the very start, I had the feeling that it was going to be hard for us to part. You make me happy the whole day through. We'll never have to say so long because at the altar they'll be playing our song. After we say I do, I know that we'll be happy the whole day through. Chapter 7 Ghost in the Townhouse I am adding this chapter to the story because I feel that it has something to do with the real diamond. This incident occurred right after we moved into the townhouse. We didn't notice too much when we first moved in because we were both working and getting settled. But after a couple of weeks, strange things start happening. The house lights flickered every once in a while, so Frank called an electrician to investigate, and he checked out all the wiring and told Frank that he couldn't find anything wrong. The electrician said, that's when the electric company switches grids from time to time to distribute the load, and this would cause a power surge and the lights would flicker. This explanation seemed to make sense. At night we still heard noises, and Frank would get his flashlight and gun and go through the house, and could find nothing wrong. We started to believe that this house could be haunted, the next day, Frank started asking questions about the history of this house. The landlord told Frank that there were no complaints about ghosts 
from the previous owner or other tenants that lived in the house before us. Things seemed to quiet down in the house for a while. Frank told me that this was probably a friendly ghost who was trying to communicate with us. So the next day, Frank asked me if I would like to go to the casino. I said yes. We had a good time and even won some money. When we arrived home, we noticed that the lights were on and when we went inside, the house was cold. I asked Frank, did you leave the lights on and forget to turn on the heat? Frank said no. Since the house was always cold, Frank decided to have the heating system checked and the worker couldn't find anything wrong and suggested that we change the thermostat. And we did. Again, everything was quiet. Frank decided to find out if anything ever happened in this house. He checked with the neighbors and one of them told Frank that her grandmother told her that right after the house was built in the 1870s, a married couple lived there for a long time. The wife found out that her husband wanted to leave her for another woman. And when she confronted him about this, he told her that he wanted to split up with her. They were always fighting. Then Frank asked the neighbor what finally happened. She said that the husband wanted the diamond ring back that he gave her because he wanted to give it to his new love. His wife said that the ring was hers and she wasn't going to give it up. Then, after one of their fights, the husband pushed his wife down the steps and she hit her head and was killed instantly. The husband took the diamond ring off of her lifeless finger and gave it to the other woman. This guy was never charged with anything and the death was ruled an accident. Frank told me what happened and what the neighbor told him. And we thought that there could be a connection with us. Because this couple was about our age and the diamond ring was the reason that this woman was killed. Frank and I also felt that this ghost picked us because of the real diamond that Frank gave me to let us know that we should never leave each other for someone else. Frank told me that if we would ever split up, I was to keep the real diamond and he would keep the fake one. Frank told me that he was going to take pictures where the woman was killed. So the next day, Frank got out his Polaroid camera and snapped several pictures through the house. As he waited for the pictures to develop, they all came up blank except for one, which had an image on the right side of the print. It looked like a woman dressed in Victorian clothes and she was wearing a hat. Frank showed me the picture and I agreed with him to what he saw. I noticed something else. She was standing showing her left side and I noticed that she had a large diamond ring on her left hand. This was probably the ghost that was haunting the house. Next day Frank decided to take pictures of the outside of the house. But this time all the pictures came out since the film was new and the other film he used was outdated. Frank examined all the pictures and didn't seem to notice anything wrong. So, when I came home from work, Frank asked me to look at the pictures to see if I could find anything unusual. I did notice something on one of the pictures of the front. It looked like someone was looking out the window next to the steps. Frank said, that is our ghost. It had to be because I was not at home when Frank took these pictures. We go to church a lot and light candles. I told one of the priests about the ghost and asked him to bless our house. The next day our house was blessed and everything was back to normal. The next time I talked to the priest, he told me that the ghost could now rest in peace and cross over to the spirit world, because she let us know what really happened to her. I asked Frank to show me the first picture that he took on the outdated film. When we looked at this picture, I noticed that the ring on her finger was gone, 
and the rest of her image was the same. Frank said, Our ghost took the ring with her when she crossed over and left her image on the picture behind for us to remember her by. I agreed with Frank's explanation. We lived in the townhouse for over 20 years, and there were no more incidents. We moved to another apartment in the same neighborhood where we are living now for over 20 years. I will discuss why we had to move from the townhouse as you read the rest of the story. Chapter 8 Sale of the Real Diamond After over 20 years living in the townhouse, Frank called me from work and told me that the real estate agent called him and told him that the townhouse was sold and the buyer wanted to live there and that we would have to be out in 30 days. I was shocked. Frank said, don't worry, we will work it out. That night in bed, Frank said that this might have happened for the best and that we needed a change anyway. I asked Frank, where can we find a place like this? Frank said that he knows this guy who comes into the store where he works, and he has a lot of properties and businesses in this neighborhood. He will call him tomorrow and let me know if he has a place for us. The next day, Frank called me and said, Darling, I got good news. This guy that I told you about has an apartment for rent, and it's about three blocks away from the townhouse. Marie, do you want to see it today? I said, yes, I will pick you up after work. Frank told me in the car that this apartment was small, but we will have the backyard, basement, and a washer and dryer. It's on the first floor. When we arrived, the owner was waiting for us. After some small talk, he showed us around. I liked this place, even though it was small. Frank told the owner that we will let him know our decision as soon as possible. When we got home, Frank asked me, how did I like our new place? And I said, I did like it. And I told him, let's take it. Frank asked me, what made you decide to take this place? I told him, it's right near the church that we go to, and the bank where we have the real diamond is in the safe deposit box is on the corner across the street. Frank told me that he was happy that I liked the little place as much as he did. Since we found our new home so easily, it will give us more time to move. The next day, Frank called me and said that he went to the owner and finalized the deal. Frank told the owner that we couldn't move in until the first of next month. The owner said that we could start moving our things little by little, and he wasn't going to charge us until the first of next month. Frank told him that he could fix up the basement and paint the place in appreciation for the free time. Then the owner asked Frank, would he like to be caretaker of the building? Frank said, yes, sir. He also told me that he wasn't going to raise our rent as long as we lived there. I told Frank, you really got a sweet deal. Even though we were moving to a smaller place, the location and the no rent increase makes up for the difference in size. Frank told me that he has more things to discuss when he gets home. That night in bed, Frank said that he was happy the way things are working out. Since we are a little behind on some bills, Frank asked me, Would you mind if we sold the real diamond? I asked Frank, What made you decide to do that? Frank said that this way we can pay off some bills and we can have savings. I told him that I really liked the idea. Then he said that this way, instead of leaving the real diamond in the bank, we can get interest on this money in our savings account. Frank, do you think that we'll be able to find a buyer for the real diamond? 
Frank said that he decided to sell it back to the jeweler. This way, we won't have to worry about a would-be buyer pulling the fast one on us. Frank had asked the jeweler about selling it back when he bought the real diamond, and the jeweler told him that he would give him 10% less than the purchase price. This way, the jeweler can make a profit on the deal. I said, Frank, you really have a lot of things to do. Frank said that he was going to call the jeweler the first thing in the morning from work. Frank called the jeweler the next day, and he said that he would buy the real diamond back. No questions asked. When Frank told me this, I said, you really work fast. I read, this way we will have even more time for moving. When Frank came home from work, I asked him, how come you're a little late? Frank said that he had rushed to the bank on his lunch hour, got the real diamond, closed the safe deposit box, and rushed to the jeweler and finalized the deal, then rushed back to the bank to deposit the check into our savings account. Frank told me that the jeweler kept his word. He gave us 10% less than the purchase price. And then Frank went back to the job. I said, Frank, you really don't waste any time. Frank said, let's go to dinner at our favorite restaurant to celebrate. I got dressed in my most beautiful gown, the one that I wore when Frank gave me the real diamond over 20 years ago. I was very happy now, and so was Frank. So the next day, Frank was ready to start work on our new place. After work from his day job, he went to the new place and started cleaning out the basement. When Frank came home, he told me his idea for our new home. Remember, Marie, I have a lot of things to do. And it's going to be hard to fit everything from our big place into the smaller place. Frank also told me that the basement was a lot bigger in the new place and we could put a lot of things from our bigger place down there. I told Frank, you better get some rest. Frank said, let's go to bed, Marie, and get ready for another exciting day. Frank went to the new place every day after work for about two weeks. He told me what he had gotten done so far. Marie, I cleaned everything out of the basement and swept, mopped, and painted the basement floor gray and put the owner's stuff in the front so he could pick it up later. Frank also told me that this guy he knows is going to help him take apart the shelving from the townhouse basement and put them back together in the new place basement. And once that was done, he moved everything that was on the shelves in the townhouse basement to the new place basement. Finally, Frank got all the things moved from the townhouse basement to the new place basement, plus a lot of things from the rest of the house that we weren't using. Now our townhouse was three quarters moved with time to spare. I hadn't seen the new place since the day that we went there because Frank didn't want me to see our new home until everything was moved. Finally, everything got moved and Frank took me to see the new home. I couldn't believe how he fit everything into this small place. Frank put everything down the basement that didn't fit in the small apartment. He had everything in boxes marked and neatly stacked, and all the pictures and wall decorations stacked vertically in wooden racks that he made. Frank used every possible space. Frank only left just enough space to get around to access the washer and dryer. That night in bed, Frank asked me, Marie, how do you like everything so far? I said, Frank, I am happy the way everything turned out. Since you put everything in the new place like it was in the old place, and it was almost like we didn't even move. Frank kept his word with the owner and fixed up the house over the next 20 years. Frank did everything you could think of. He painted the inside and outside, plus the doors and windows. 
several times, giving that house that fresh look all the time. We also put carpeted stair treads on all the steps, including the basement. Frank put paintings in the hallway and vestibule and wall mirrors on each floor and other artwork that he bought over the years. Every inch of wall space was filled with the stuff that didn't fit in the small place. Frank treated the hallway like it was part of our apartment. Frank painted our apartment several times, which made it look better than it did when we first moved in. Frank collected the rents, kept the house clean, inside and out, and he did whatever needed to be done to maintain the property to the highest standards. Frank was used to doing these things because he was doing the same things when I first met him for his mother's property. The owner was so pleased the way Frank was taking care of everything that he wanted to put us in his will. Of course, this was just a gesture of appreciation. Can you imagine what it's like not having a rent increase for over 20 years and don't have to worry about moving unless we wanted to? I guess you could say that this was the house that Frank built. One more thing. When we first moved in to the new place, I asked Frank to pick one of the songs that he wrote when we first start going together. Frank thought for a moment and said, Marie, the song I wrote over 20 years ago would be Peace of Mind. I said, let's play it now. Frank took the song from his collection and played it, and it sounded just as good as it did the day when he first wrote it. Frank then looked at me and said, Marie, my baby, I hope that this song comes true and we will have peace of mind and live happily ever after in our new home. This song has come true so far, and we are living out our lives, and our love is just as strong as ever. We may be a little older, heavier, and grayer now, but we still have each other. And that proves that if Frank didn't write the real Diamond song, we probably would have never met, and our lives would have turned out different. That's why I wrote this story, and I believe in destiny. I hope that the reader enjoyed this story as much as I did writing it. At this time, I would like to wish everyone peace of mind from Frank and Marie. The lyrics of peace of mind that Frank wrote over 40 years ago is next. Peace of mind by the unknown songwriter. Everywhere that you go, and even places you don't even know, you can go to a mountaintop or just pay a visit to your mom and pop. Peace of mind is hard to find. In the crisis that we face every day, it's tough to put your mind at ease. But if you do find solace for a moment, you'll be the one that you please. Peace of mind is hard to find. Everybody is one of a kind, and we're all trying to find peace of mind. You think of the things that you have to do, and you find out that there are quite a few. Peace of mind is hard to find. If you're lost, you can't find your way, whether it's for a week or just for a day. And when you finally get on the right track, you won't ever want to go back. Peace of mind is hard to find. You can look under a rock or just go from block to block. You can take an ocean voyage to a faraway land or just hold each other's hand. Peace of mind is hard to find. If I could make just one wish, it would be for mankind that everybody, everywhere, would have peace of mind. Peace of mind is hard to find. Chapter 9 Final Thoughts Frank and I have been together for over 40 years. During the first 20 years, everything dramatic and exciting seemed to happen. But during the last 20 years, our lives have been complacent. I could have written this story 20 years ago, and it probably would have been exactly the same as the story that I wrote now. I didn't mention in the story that Frank showed me photos of the pot plants. 
because he didn't show them to me till after we moved into the smaller place. I asked Frank, why are you showing me these pictures now? Frank told me that he didn't find them until now. These pictures showed Frank in jeans with a dark beard in his mom's backyard surrounded by the tomato and pot plants. Who took these pictures? Frank said the guy that he bought the pot from. Was your mom there? Frank told me that he brought this guy over to see his mom several times. Who did you tell your mom this guy was? Ruby, I told her that he was my best friend and that he got me the job as manager of the movie theater. Frank's mom liked this guy a lot, so much that she invited him to dinner many times. Frank, when did he take the pot pictures? Frank said, one of the, on the, one of the many visits to my home. Marie, I told my mom that I wanted to show him the tomato plants, which was right before we put out the pot plants in the trash. We still have the pot photos, which verifies this part of the story about the pot plants. I didn't mention Frank's jobs because he had so many over a 40-year period. It would have taken another book just to describe the things that he did. Most of his jobs were in management. Frank also had his own antique store. The trouble with Frank's jobs was that he didn't get paid enough, but he sure had jobs that were fun for him. Most of his jobs were in the neighborhood. Since this is a true story, a lot of things can be verified. Frank has demos, sheet music, and copyrights for the songs that I mentioned here. The stolen car story can be verified because we still have the newspaper articles that were written by the reporter that was on the scene when Frank caught the car thief. The ghost in the townhouse can be verified because we still have the two photos that Frank took. Frank also still has the bill for the iron bars that were put on the windows and doors after the guy broke in. While Frank was paying his debt to society, he called me and wrote me a lot of letters, which I still have. When Frank sent me the letters, he sent me two at a time. One about the prison camp and one he made up about Italy. The guy who broke in the house was following us all the time, but we didn't have a clue. He was attracted by the big diamond that I was wearing everywhere. Remember, I was wearing a fake diamond and this guy thought it was real. This part of the story happened after we cleansed the house of the friendly ghost. I want to clear something up here. We never saw a ghost or an apparition, but we did experience strange events which we thought at first was the result of an aging house. Remember, Frank used outdated film which captured an image of our ghost which we decided the ghost wanted us to see, which made Frank investigate with the neighbors and found out what happened. This gave us closure and the ghost could now rest in peace. I would like to let you know about Frank's songwriting. Before we met, he wrote a lot of so lyrics, and he only put the ones he liked to music. The songwriting stopped after Frank met me. The songs that he wrote had meaning, and we still listen to his songs all the time. Our favorite song, you guessed it, is Real Diamond. One more thing, I'm writing this story at the present time. We are both living on Social Security and Medicare and are still in pretty good shape. Even though Frank had open heart surgery a few years ago, and I've had both knees replaced. I guess you are probably wondering what happened to the fake diamond. It was stolen by an aide who was filling in for the regular aide who was out sick. This incident happened right before I finished writing the story. When I told Frank, he said, Marie, do you want to get me to get you another fake diamond? I told Frank that I think that this was a good way to end the story about a real diamond with the theft of the fake diamond. My niece Olga 
has helped me in making this book come to fruition. I 
sunny day when I'm with you the clouds go away but when I'm not the happiness you've given me means a lot I hope that you knew the love I have is only for you I do from the very start